Hi, this is Alan with 4A's Racing Off. I am back for another training toss today. Same area, just on the opposite side of the highway from yesterday. I went back and I was looking at the film and I really did not like the wires being so close. And it was probably a little hard to hear me due to some of the road traffic. So I hope today this is much better than what it was yesterday. So we taking them 23 miles due east of where I live. So they're going to be heading back west. The winds are coming out of the south, I'm going to say at 5 miles an hour. So not as bad today as yesterday. I know when I got back to the house, I was going to say it was between 10 and 15 miles an hour. So I believe the birds did well. You know, the first one showed up, I'm going to say close to 45 minutes. It was a single. I had another single that came in after that, maybe a minute and a half after. And then somewhere around 49 minutes, I uh, had that large group that you saw that came in. And maybe a minute and a half to two minutes after that, there was five or six that came in. Then I had a few other singles. Actually, uh, I got all the birds back. Um, shortly after I stopped filming, I went in and count, and I think I had five or six out, so they all made it back. And I know everyone treats young birds a little different than old birds. Um, I'm, I'm a lot more cautious on young birds than I am on old birds. Old birds are smarter, they know what they're doing, uh, they're more experienced. You know, you, you get that from a, a teen to an adult, is, is very similar. For a young bird, you're just trying to teach them how to home, how to fight against the winds. Um, how to locate, you know, you look up at the clouds and you try to find good conditions to train them in. There are some low clouds, they're spotty because the sun helps them to uh, navigate home. They have a built-in GPS. So they try to use all these different factors to find their home loft. So I'm a little bit more cautious when I start flying them, not to take them or push them too hard, but once I start, I'm going to expect them to do it. You, you cannot baby them, but you don't want to put them at risk. You know, you do your best. You give them the best food that you can. You make sure they're vaccinated. Make sure they have good health. Make sure the loft is in good condition. Your loft is clean. You train them and train them well. And there's many different factors behind training. Uh, you can do a video just on that alone. Um, you know, I prefer if I can get them an hour on the wing, I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, as I mentioned before, I think we're five weeks out before our first club race. And it depends on where we go, but there's a chance I can be anywhere from 100 to 115, 20 miles out, which is a reality for me. And they almost have to go southwest uh, to get back more west in my club i'm the only one that's this far um, west everyone else is more south we might pick up some new members from the austin club so actually we're meeting today to uh, determine who's going to join where but we will be flying with austin unfortunately we will not be flying with belton and waco right now but we will have a combine uh, in the Austin club, there are two other members uh, for that club. One is probably six air miles away, and I'm going to say the other is 10. So that's going to help me, and they do have a lot of birds. Currently, I think I have 39 um, that I have on the race team. We'll see if that actually continues to be the case. Um, really trying to make sure I do what's best for them to give them an opportunity to compete and make it home. And right now, all I'm concerned about is them making it home. If I can get them on the first sheet, I'm happy with that. Starting all over is tough. It's, it's not easy. I'm sure everyone understands that. I uh, was fortunate enough to have someone help me build a loft. Um, and I had others that gave me birds. And that's one good thing about this sport. 
uh, people will help you out now they won't tell you all their secrets and and um, give you everything they know in their heads or how they train how they feed what they do but they will be supportive you know Osmani Frank Gene I'm sorry Osmani Frank Ray and David and Richard and Lofts actually mailed me two birds uh, gave me birds to start off with I did purchase some birds from one gentleman older gentleman with a old family of Sion's um, for those who know what Sion's basically they are what you would consider you know a 400 mile plus bird uh, tough birds um, but they don't mature as fast as others so that's something that you have to be prepared and understand so just trying to start off with the base team those members that gave me birds all fly well locally so I'll try to get good birds from people that um, fly well and, you know, birds show up on the race sheet to really give yourself an opportunity to be competitive because it can be a little depressing if your birds don't come back and or they come back late all the time. But it's a process. You, you have to invest. You can't expect right away to win races competing for five or six years that I did before and and took seven years off um, I'm, I'm extremely competitive I want to win uh, I'm going to say that up front I'm not doing it just for the sake of doing it but it's relaxing to me it's peaceful it's good camaraderie you get together with people that have uh, common goals as you do they enjoy racing birds they're going to tell stories it's also a social deal, but it's also based on what you're doing for your birds, how they compete. So, did you feed them right? Are they healthy? Did you train them? So, are you giving them all the opportunities they can to make it home? And then it's the little things that you do. How you train, how you feed, how you vaccinate, when you vaccinate, when do you start training? Do you train them in a win? Do you don't train them in a win? Do you only train them on the race course? Now that's that's a tough one. Some say yes, some say no. Um, I would say, do I train on the race course? Yes. Uh, the whole time, no. Because your birds don't always come directly back to your loft. They're gonna get blown north, south, east, west of your loft. So it's important for them to know the area around your loft. Now how far out? That's, that's a discussion or a topic that you have to really de decide for yourself because what works for one person doesn't work for all. Um, you know, is it 10, 15, 20 miles around your, lo your loft? You go north, south, east, west, northeast, southeast. You know, you try to take them around the clock and then at some point, then maybe only train them on the race, call, uh, race course. You want your birds to be able to home that's going to be the key piece you want them to come out to crate and home do you want them to follow everyone else or do you want them to break do you want them to head direct home or do you want them to follow other people's loss so during the training season and before club races i'm going to actually ask osmani and frank if they um, want to train our birds together i have to teach the birds how to split and how to come back home and how not to follow uh, because no one in my club is close to me they're they're in a different club but they are close and if we fly in a combine they are the closest loft so if they do follow or while they're learning because you want to train them for young birds i'd rather pick lofts that are close to me because they will follow other birds they're going to go to the wrong loft so if they do that i don't want them to be 40 50 miles away from home they'll be six and ten miles away from home so then they, it's easier for them to get home so there's so much to talk about and someone asked a question i apologize for not responding earlier work was very crazy for me for a while and um i wasn't doing much on videos because i was just training the birds trying to get them healthy letting them out around the loft not much to show so why did i stop seven years ago work got extremely busy um, life personally was busy trying to do things around the house trying to do things around the family then I start traveling a lot for work traveling a lot for personal reasons and I just couldn't do it 
So I sold some of my birds, I gave some of my birds away. And fortunately, um, there are still some birds out there that still have my butt lines before. And I used to do extremely well in club races. Uh, when champion loft, champion bird, I had some birds in one loft races that did extremely well. Actually, David had a couple of my birds and there's one white bird. Let's see. Yeah, the white grizzle that's more white actually came from my family from a cock uh, that David got for me who was um, mm -hmm. born in 2015. So that's one of his direct sons. I would say that brick or the one that's still a grizzle, but that red grizzle, red check actually came from Rich and Lofts. Um, so those bloodlines make a difference and it's good to see the bloodlines I had before are still competitive today so having some direct children off the birds I had before some of the birds that others have gotten from when I stopped flying one of them races one of them one loft races one of the money in one loft races so it's just trying to find the right bloodlines the right birds that fly well for you in the conditions that you're flying and then you have to talk to other flyers to get that. So, so much to say, so much to do, so many different ways to do it. But look, we'll get ready to let these birds out. They're 23 miles away from home. Uh, wind's about five miles out of the south. So let's say hopefully today they do just as good. I am concerned that there are some low clouds and cloud patches on the way back from